It's like, you know, when the main character of the movie gets hurt in the beginning, everybody's like, OMG, he's about to die. And you're just like, come on now. No, it's not over. I was meant to go through this so I can show people that you can get through it. Life is symbolic. Council for Children's Rights is a nonprofit agency that stands up for children when the other adults in their life who should, can't, or won't. We listen to what they say. We see them as they are. We understand what their hopes and dreams are, and we help them to find a way to realize those. Oh, it's like I was, people were born to hate me. And that's why I used to tell my mom the whole time, like, what did I do? Why did I start getting beat? Like, what's going on? My mom worked a lot, my mom's a workaholic, so they would only beat on us when she wasn't home. Alexis was my very first case at Council for Children's Rights. The attorney that I was taking the case from brought in, I asked for the file, and they started bringing in boxes into my office, and the boxes just kept coming. And I don't think it really snapped until someone from school called DSS. And my mom's confused because she's like, I get up and go to work every day to provide for my children and I leave them with people who's supposed to care for them and then this is what happened. What she had lived through in those 14 years was horrific. She had been severely abused by her father. She had witnessed other traumatic events with her family. The list goes on and on of every traumatic event that you could ever imagine. I was running away. I was just going back home. I wasn't really trying to hear what they had to say because they weren't saying the right things. It seemed like everybody was just wanted me to just to be outside the home. Like, what's the goal? Okay, I'm outside the home, what's the goal? To be in foster care until I'm done. You took me away from my mom. My dad molested me. What am I supposed to do after this? Come live with you guys? She was angry. She wanted to get out. She didn't know why she was being locked in that facility. She didn't know why people were telling her that she was crazy. She didn't know why she was being blamed for the things that she was struggling with. I was at day treatment. I was. I had got out of school. I was getting in trouble. They, Garinger couldn't handle me. And so they put me in day treatment at Behavioral Health. Well, that didn't work because I was still angry. You know, so the last straw was like, okay, let's lock her up for a couple of months and for a psychiatric treatment on her. So at that point, that's when I met Heather within that meeting. And I remember her asking, she's like, are you gonna actually care? Are you gonna actually do something for me? And it really made me think about what this role is and why she was asking that. And to make sure that our relationship and what we were going to do was gonna be different. When a child realizes that you do believe them and that you do trust them and that you do value them, then they are more willing to hear you. They are more willing to express themselves so that you don't have any gaps in your information. And I think that that is the connection that Heather and Alexis made with each other, that Alexis knew that Heather was on her side even when she wasn't there with her. It is accurate to say that the lives of our children are very complicated. Often, the source of that complication comes from the adults in their life. So we, we need to listen to them. We need to be able to hear them as children and to help their voice to be heard in that adult environment. And that's really what we do. We, we make certain that the adults 
who are supposed to be protecting them and educating them actually hear them and see them rather than simply imposing on them what the adults think is best for them. Without advocates like those at the Council for Children's Rights, I think most kids would have another experience with an adult who didn't see them, didn't see them. I don't know what to say what I saw in Alexis. It's like you just see a person for who they are. You can see their humanity and, um, and everything that they are and have to bring into this world to contribute to their family and their community. You can take Alexis's experiences and you can recognize that hundreds or thousands of children in our community are having similar experiences. Most of the kids that come into juvenile court, over 70% of those kids are suffering from toxic stress. Every year, between 800 and 1,000 children find themselves in foster care, and often they really just want to go home. They don't understand why, why they're being taken from their homes and why they can't return to their families. You've got almost 50% of our middle schoolers reporting being bullied on school property. Um, you've got 3,000 children facing mental health hospitalizations. Uh, you have well, last school year, we had 4,500 CMS students, more than that actually, who were considered homeless and eligible for McKinney-Vinto services. What Alexis experienced and how she thrived um, is certainly something I don't think I could do, get dealt a similar hand, and we will not see all of those children. We were lucky enough to have a Heather <laughs> who could work with Alexis and give her some of that support. But if we can change the systems, if we can change the way that not only policies at the organizational level or the legislative level are written, but change the way that we interact as a system as opposed to a group of institutions, um, we might be able to lessen the burden of the next thousand Alexis's. People don't understand the small things matter too. You know, just having someone believe in you. Think about it, my whole life I had to fight to explain myself to people who were supposed to get it. I didn't have to scream as much with Heather. She was there. She actually listened and like, all right, this is what we're gonna do. She didn't judge me by papers. When children grow through the traumatic events that Alexis has been through, there is a common misconception that the symptoms they're exhibiting are anger. And so they try, they tend to blame children. Well, you're just a bad kid, you're angry, you're defiant, stop yelling at me, you're aggressive. It comes from this punishment standpoint. But if you stop and you really understand what trauma does to children, that is a very common and appropriate response that anger is really masking so much. It's a way of telling people that the trust that they would normally have in their families and other adults in the systems, that that trust has been so badly broken that it's easier to show anger because it keeps you away and you can't hurt me again. I think I realized that I had at least one good person in my corner. I didn't have to be as defensive, you know? Because Heather was, Heather was with me in all the meetings. Heather's with me at court. I think that started allowing me to put my trust into someone to be like, okay, I'm ready for some help. Heather sees like the real me, the, the like Alexis. Imagine if I didn't have her, who would listen to me? I would just be another angry black young little girl, probably, you know what I'm saying? She is my guardian angel, you know, she's selfless. You know, she helped me find myself. Help me love myself, you know? Because for a long time, I couldn't see me. I just kept seeing everybody else. Because I'm just trying, like, okay, maybe if I give them a whole bunch of love, I'm going to get it right back. Shh, they got to give it back, because that's what I'm giving. And that's never how it's been. I've always been used. And had always like, Lexus, you got to care about yourself. If it wasn't for Heather, I probably wouldn't be here. And that's real. Because I was frustrated. So, 
that Heather is my guardian angel. While yes, we're presented with legal issues, we approach this as holistic as we can be um, and from our hearts, but we also believe that it requires attention to the individual as well as to the systems. We have to sandwich these issues because we're not really willing to write people off. There's just nothing else like this, not just in Charlotte, but in the state. I'm not aware of anything like what the Council for Children's Rights does anywhere in the country. We are providing services to children who would otherwise fall through the cracks because nobody else will do it. Nobody else will hear them or stand up for them. People who want to partner with Council for Children's Rights, at their very core, are people who will stand up and say, no one is worth throwing away. If you can get behind that, whether you know the nitty gritty about data or the law, um, you can get behind Council for Children's Rights. You know, it just takes that one person to believe in you. I got Heather in my life. I have, you know, my teacher, Ms. Shopton and Mr. Stovall, they helped me graduate. I got you guys as giving me a platform to speak. It just takes that one person, you know? But my teacher believed in me and I graduated on time. I was in the 10th grade of my last year of school. 13 classes in one semester, and I did it. And I walked with my class June 16th, 2014. I did. You know, all the stuff that I went through, I had to want to go to school and not want to kill myself and then come home and not want to kill myself. So, I want to be that one teacher that's like, you know, despite everything you're going, but we're going to make it. We're going to do it. You know, we're going to, we're going to graduate. We're going to make you happy. And that one thing set me apart. I walked with my class. I wasn't supposed to. I just want to be that one teacher that makes an impact. I don't care who it is. I can, it could be 10 years in the game and only impact one person, but as long as I impacted somebody, I made, I, I'm, you know, I'm doing my duty. Heather um, shared with me something that Alexis had said, that I was one of two or three people that she really felt saw her for who she was and kind of showed up in a way that was helpful. And um, she gave me more than I could have ever given her. And she taught me more um, than anything that I could have given to her. And what she has taught me as a person and as a judge, I think, has made me a better judge, for sure. Um, and um, I'm just grateful that our lives intersected the way they did.